and welcome to Jewish Boy Calls His Mother. I'm your host, Sadia. This is my mother, Ima. Hey, Ima. Hey, my sweetest. It's nice we're doing this together. Yes, yes, yes. This, uh, this. I'm trying to see if I look better with my glasses without my glasses. You always ask that question. I think you're fine. Um, so this week's question and topic is going to be a nosy neighbor. Have you ever been a nosy neighbor? Nosy neighbor, in other words, a yenta. A yenta, exactly, a yenta. Yeah, well, we should go into the origins of the term yenta. Actually, yenta is Yiddish for Yehudas. And if you Google it, you'll find that the way the term in Yiddish came to mean a busybody was because there was a character in a cartoon in the Daily Forwards in like 19, in the early, in 1900, like around 1900, okay. and that this backyard busybody was named yenta. And so that's how it came to oh. be known as don't be such a yenta because of this character that was named Yenta was the backyard busybody. Cool. Um, so now that you avoided the question, uh, have you ever been a yenta? Have I been a yenta? Yes. It's one of the things I've been working. One of the main things I've been working on in my life is not being a yenta. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think I think it's one of the things most of us work on. There's I know there's some sort of I think there's a sense of and being a there's something about being a yenta that gives you a false sense of superiority. It just I remember being a, as a kid, there was definitely a few people um that were yentas where it, and yenta can be gender fluid. You don't have to be a girl to be a yenta, you can be a guy to be a yenta. With your um, father the yento. Yenta, <laughs> sure. Um, because I remember specifically um, just I think it was like air of pa not air of Pesach, but the week of Pesach, and I was eating a pizza pie with with Ta, and we were outside, you know, just enjoying the sun on the yard, and some random guy goes up to Tati and is like, you know, you should paint your door because you know it's 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 not it looks like it's all rusted and it's not really you know conducive to this neighborhood, <laughs> and Tati just went off on him and yelled at him, and screamed at him, and told him to go you know, places, you know, wherever. <laughs> and I'm just like, why would, looking back, like, like, why would that guy say that? Like, who cares? <laughs> you know, it's none of your business. And that's one thing I kind of learned over time, mm -hmm. just to, just to mind your business, mm -hmm. like just mouth shut, nose clean, none of my business, whatever, do what you got to do. Like, I don't know. What do you, do you, did you ever, ever like have oh to learn that lesson? Uh, um, let me see, let me see. Um, I'm sure you know there were plenty of times that you know, especially with girls, like you know, you have a you have a good friend, and um, she's a nice she's a nice girl, and you you know you pal around with her, you, you know, and the um, and but she, you know, I'm I'm not one to talk, but you know, let's put it this way, I'm not the best when it comes to style, but at least I'm like middle. At least I know. You don't put two patterns together. You put a solid with a pattern, that type of thing. Yeah, you, yeah. I know how to match colors. Basic, basically, I I know how to do a basic wardrobe. Some people are very artistic. They can put add scarves and belts and all sorts of nice, beautiful things and different colors. You know, the more artistic about it. I'm not creative, but you know, I'm. These, You're aware, especially wearing your wearing wearing your sweatshirt here because I flew in from Florida and I just didn't to do this how, I didn't I didn't realize how chilly it was going to be up here. Yeah, so I didn't bring anything warm with me. So um, anyway, and you you know you, you tell this girl um you know really you, you could put on a little makeup you could this you you know um maybe um uh, the skirt you're wearing needs to match better with your blouse and maybe for your figure you should be wearing this style or whatever and the, the truth of the matter is though let's face it let's be very honest people don't want to hear it yeah and no matter how true it might be yeah no matter how helpful you might think you are being yep. you are just alienating that person but one of the things that we were discussing about you know people being yantas whatever i was talking i was talking to you about um crying babies people are real yantas when it comes to children and babies in the store, on the street. Um, I remember um, one time I was at Seven Mile Market and your younger sister was an infant and she was crying and crying. And I was checking out. And as we, as you know, at that time, we lived almost across the street from Seven Mile Market. It was just like a five minute walk, maybe. 
And these ladies, these elderly ladies come over to me. Oh, your baby is crying. You've got to do something, please. And I'm going, lady, I said, please, I live right across the street. I'm checking out. I'm going to take care of her. I'm, oh, but she's crying. Oh, you must do something. Oh, can I hold her? Oh, you've got to do I'm going, Please, madam, thank you. Please, I'm, I'm checking out. I'm across the street. Don't worry. And and I also, I work um, in an infant daycare. And there are times we do the best we can. Yes. And you, when, a, when a baby is crying, we do everything. We change their diaper. Maybe they're hungry. Try to feed them. If that doesn't work, so maybe they've got... Gas is a very big problem with babies. Okay. They're, the first, especially the first few months, because... The um, digestive system of a newborn is not totally developed. And gas is a very, very big issue. Also, with nursing mothers, even with even with formulas, not all formulas will work well with all babies. There are some babies who something is with their digestive system and their enzymes. You know, not all enzymes also have kicked in yet. Yeah. And there are some formulas that do not do well with the baby. And as far as nursing mothers go, there are certain foods that will make the milk that will cause colic in a baby. Like the first few months, you have to keep away from milk products, from any type of like anything related to the cabbage family. All green leafy vegetables are totally wow. out for the first three months that you're nursing. Um, and tomatoes, you can have tomatoes or garlic or onion, anything like that. Cucumbers, the you know, and so... Um, a lot of months, and sometimes even if you cut out all those things, there might be one thing that to your baby and to their digestive system is sensitive, even though to say another baby, it wouldn't be. So you got, it's like hit and miss hmm. to figure out what you're eating, what, you know, makes, what induces colic in the baby. Well, every now and then, so we do everything we can. We carry the baby around. A lot of times the baby has to burp. We try to hold the baby close to us and, you know, so the warmth of our body will help break up the gas bubbles in the baby. Yeah. But every now and then you will get a baby who, no matter what you do, is just determined that they want their mother and they are going to scream, and scream and cry until they get their mother. Well, we had a baby in our daycare that was like that one time. We were going crazy, trying to calm this baby down, trying to do everything to get this baby to stop crying and be happy. And one of the people in the in the um, facility comes in. Why is that baby crying so much? And I had been, I was I was at my wits end at that point. And I turned around and I said, "Because it's a baby, and that's what babies do. Babies cry." Yeah, I think that's one thing people are realizing nowadays more than anything else is just to mind your own business and do your own thing. I mean, we just had this one issue with this one situation where a friend of mine you know, has problems with being on time and having a schedule to keep. And we're depending on him to take care of his schedule. And unfortunately, he's not the best at being in charge of his schedule. And one of my friends also wanted to be like, well, I'll tell him, I'll tell him what's going on. You know, he needs to learn. He needs to know his lesson. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, no matter what you say to him, it's, he's just going to get defensive. He's just going to get upset. He's not going to listen to you. He's not going to improve on his scheduling. You have to just accept that that's who he is. And that's how he's going to be. And you want to just worry, depend uh, on him to a point and then don't depend on him. And if he complains to you and says, hey, how come, you know, you're not depending on me? Just be honest and say, well, sorry, Charlie, you're just not dependable. And just leave it at that. And if he feels he needed, needs to change, then he will change. And that's it. And that's that. That's why I told my friend he was just so upset and so like gung ho. It, it's also nowadays people can't take criticism at, at all. Like I don't think, like maybe maybe no one really could back in the day, and people are just being honest about it. But I don't think people can take criticism nowadays. I don't think people can understand constructive criticism of what they need to work on uh, by anybody who would be like sit them down like, hey, I think I need you need to work on this. You know, I, I I don't know if anybody will really sit down and like listen. I think the only the only time, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like I have I've had a lot of people in my life who um, there's criticism is like medicine, yeah, and you can't overdose. And I can see say um, constructive criticism in a professional setting. You know what I mean? A boss saying this is what you're doing. You know. And, 
on the job. And this is what you're doing. This is what you what we that you need to improve on. Yada yada. You know, um, like I said, a professional setting. Uh, you know, you hire a cleaning person, and you you know they didn't really do a great job cleaning. You say, listen, I'd like to hire you for this, but this is what you need to do, and you didn't do that last time. Please do it this time. You know, but as far as that goes, to the criticism on a personal level is like, I like see people don't, people don't want to hear it. No. And no. Um, it's always best to be quiet. It's, I, th I think so. Unless like, um, I don't know, it's, it's a very strange thing. Like unless it, you know, really gets to a very, very serious level that like, if you're concerned for something, like if someone's doing something, I guess that is. Um, Embarrassing maybe. Yeah. Embarrassing or, or maybe even dangerous. Let's go for somebody somebody who's involved in risky behavior. Even dangerous. Sadly yeah. enough, like like I haven't well, I know a lot of people in this situation. <laughs> um I have a friend of mine who like I don't think he's in the right situation. I don't think mm -hmm. he's in a good state of state of mind. But I don't tell him what he needs to work on because I, I don't think he can handle it. And I think mm -hmm. nowadays people aren't emotionally stable enough to handle that. Just just being told. I don't think people are, people are emotionally stable. The average person nowadays mm -hmm. is not emotionally stable enough to really do it. I think people have a lot of destructive, you know, habits and attitudes that I don't think they can properly control and resolve. And I think that's the frustration a lot of people have where everybody is looking for the easy way out because no one wants to confront their own demons. Hmm. I don't know. Well, for a person that, I mean, think about changing, changing behavior requires a lot of work. Yeah. It really does. Um, maybe if, you know, like if you have a good friend that is really in left field and is, um, really doing really doing you know stuff that they really need to work on maybe what if like if you think that let's suppose you maybe you think this person would this person benefit from therapy maybe you can suggest of course he would okay. of course he would but he's but, not going to go that, yeah that's he's not going to go yeah, anybody would be yeah. benefit benefit i think this is the reason why mm -hmm. in judaism there is this concept that isn't really done nowadays but yeah, he, he he's not very pet. pet, pet. Oh, done. I was trying no, to. No, he, he just trying to pet the cat. care for it. Yeah. Um. He, yeah, I, I try petting him all the time. He's okay. he's just not nothing. He's not friendly. He's just like he just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Um, that there's a concept called cherem, mm -hmm. where if someone keeps on acting out and it's not acting the way they should, they should. Mm -hmm. People just shun them and excommunicate them, and and only will let them return when they change their attitude. And it's just, it's a little harsh, a little rough around the edges. And I think nowadays people would, if people felt nowadays knew about harem, they would freak out. Like, how could you? That's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. But back in the day, that's how it was done. I, you I go think, ahead, you act today, like a I fool. Think, I think today too, the problem is also we're, we're living in a very individualistic minded world, especially the United States. Americans yeah. in general are very independent, very individualistically minded. <laughs> and I think... In these days, a harem wouldn't work at all. It'd be like, no. oh well, that's their problem. They don't, they don't, they don't, they they will not have the pleasure of my company. Too bad. Now, you know, people would just say, they well, get it. And yeah, then they'll just go off and do what they want to do, and uh, heck with everybody else. And that that's that's my point from the beginning, where mm -hmm. like this generation, it's just we really are getting weaker and weaker and weaker as a people, where like they can't hack this idea that hey, you know, maybe you should knock that off. You know, nowadays, this whole thing of like being canceled and, and not being canceled and mm. doing this, doing that. It's like it's such a drastic, drastic like measure when all you have to do is just have a conversation. But that conversation can't happen because people aren't emotionally able to do that. That's that's kind of how it is. Um, but to veer off on, 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 a, on a different topic, but but similar um, when it comes to, I guess, when you had any friends that were going off the derrick, so to speak, in, in whichever way you had, when you were, I would say, a teenager is when it really, when it really happens. 
Like, did you stop and say anything, or did you join them, or you didn't notice or weren't paying attention? I, was, I wasn't from as a teenager. I know, I, I, off the so, deck is more like a generic term I'm using, um, like, where it's like, like getting involved in risky behavior. Exactly, with risky um, behavior, hanging out the wrong crowd, doing um, the wrong kinds of drugs. Um, I never had any friends that um you had nerd friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's the answer. Yeah, no, that'd be fine. Kids. Yeah, but you're nerds. They were they were they were good kids, but um I but I um I had a lot of problems as a teenager and um there were a lot of people that were very concerned about me because they, they all said the same thing. They said, you know, you're you're a really nice person, you have a lot of good qualities, but this is what you're doing. That's causing people. That's causing alienation. What was it in people? Um, and basically was um, I was overly sensitive. Mm -hmm. I was overreacting to you know some of the some of the, you know the, like there were times that I would take offense to what I thought was um, a personal attack, and it really wasn't. It was you know people were just you know jet you know having a little fun with me, but they really you know weren't being vicious and i overreacted to that um i was also um i was also overly critical mm. of the of the people around me what we should have ordered criticize you know like what, what do you find annoying what how someone dressed yeah someone talked yep you're right just being a <laughs> bitch just being a total oh god yeah yeah you were fun to hang out with as a teenager weren't you <laughs> well really enjoyable real handful actually the somebody, bitchy nerds so, somebody told me that um I used to do like all this crazy stuff. And this girl told me that a lot of the kids kind of like liked the crazy stuff I did. They thought it was cool. <laughs> yeah. What crazy stuff did you do? Um, just, I'm trying to think. I was, I was kind of a, I was kind of a wild kid. Um, um, I was with when these kids, well, you know, I came to high school dances. I love dancing, mm -hmm. love dancing a lot. And um, I used to like, you know, sometimes we do like little pranks or some of some of the pranks. You know. walk a few pranks. Okay, I'm trying to think, but oh, this, this, these kids were really funny. It was, it was during the time of All State Orchestra. Okay. And so um, All State Orchestra it was really nice. We we would rehearse like we had they they were the if you made All State Orchestra, you had the entire week off of school. You had to make up the work later, but you would get the entire week off school, off of school to be able to practice. And they would send some big, like really big name conductors. Would come um, to to conduct to conduct us, and at the end of the week, we would perform for the Maryland State Teachers Association for their convention. Okay, which came, which usually was you know um, at the end of the at the end of that week. So um, there was a whole contingency, a whole bunch of kids that were from Montgomery County. Okay, and <laughs> they, for a joke, and a lot of kids took them seriously. As a matter of fact, a lot of them were Jewish. They said that they had found a new religion called the. I think did we do this one time? No, but I remember, okay. I remember you telling me about this like yeah. a long time ago. Uh -huh, right. Kids. They 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 did. Um, they said that they had found a new religion called the God of Macaroni. Oh yeah. yes, you told and me this back in the day. They believed in the Immaculate Misconception, and what they would do is they would go to a public place like a store or something, and they would have a revival where one of the kids would jump up on like a table or something and yell. Want to be saved? And all these kids would stand and say, "Yeah, I want to be saved." He goes, "You want to be saved?" And they go, "Yeah, I want to be saved." He says, "Get on your knees and say you believe in the God of Macaroni and, and the Mac of Misconception." And some and some of the kids in our school, I get, they said, "Those those kids have this crazy cult that they're in." It's called the guy. I said, so I decided to talk to one of them, and I spoke to a few of them, and I came back to my crowd, my crowd, and I said, "There are a bunch of Jewish kids that are playing a prank." So one day they asked me if I wanted to join Macaroni. I said, I said, yeah, they wanted to be involved in one of the I said, yeah. So it was in the, they came to the cafeteria. I think I forgot where they were in the music room. The cafeteria was where, where they usually would do this where there were a bunch of kids hanging out. And this the leader of the group jumped on the table. He goes, Do you want to be saved? He goes, Which one he wants to be saved? And I would I was supposed to I would go supposed to go, yes, I want to be saved. He goes, You want to be saved? He goes, This girl wants to be saved. Said, yes, I want to be saved. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, I, th I think I'm trying to think of other stuff, other pranks that we did when we were kids. Um, I think, I mean, one of the things we did, we did, we, we like to try to emulate jackass back in the day. Do you know what that is? I think I've seen the videos or something. Yeah. They, they do these, these things that, these cutsy things. They're, they're I mean, they... pranks and cutsy things and stuff that's like very damaging. And so one of the things was we, we recorded, I, I shot my friend with a BB gun in the ass. And like, we thought it was so funny. 
it's but not with the hands. Um, it hurts. Yeah, he yeah. Guns hurt. That's the whole point. It's supposed to hurt, and that that was the whole tra- uh, stuff. It wasn't really like a prank, um, but I was trying to think of anything else that like. Well, I remember tonight we were talking about over dinner about um you guys running when you were a little uh running down the back alley chasing chasing these um rats down the back alley with your BB guns. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rats. Well, we had because there, there was a rat problem back in the day. There was mm-hmm, probably, there's yeah. probably still is in other parts of Baltimore, mm-hmm. but there was like a rat problem, and mm-hmm. we had our BB guns, and then we just constantly just shot at the rats because like that's the only way to get rid of them. And, and eventually, that's when we started getting cats here because it was an issue. Mm-hmm. Because we had a problem where we're like the house next to us was completely abandoned, mm-hmm. and then we started getting mice, mm-hmm. and like it wasn't worth it paying like three hundred bucks to you know pest control every every like couple of months. Just forget it. Just get a cat, and mm-hmm. we had a cat, and therefore that was like it. yeah, mm-hmm. and also the, we, that's when also all these cats showed up in our back alley too. Yeah, and also the chicken hawk. Chicken hawk. Uh huh. Yeah, there was one. Um, I didn't know what it was. What happened was you kids came to me and said, "Ema, there's this." huge bird on our porch and i go oh come on what huge bird again you gotta see it. you gotta see it okay so i go on. i saw it. this thing was gigantic it, it had the markings of an owl but it it had the beak of an owl the markings of an owl but not the eyes interesting and it, it was daytime wasn't an owl. it was daytime right so what the heck is that and i found out later from um one of our friends who has like had like a little farm around here, a little chicken coop, and had the like nice land. Yeah. And okay. So anyway, she told me, oh, that she was telling me that it's called a chicken hawk, and it goes, it it goes, it's it attacks chickens and snaps off their head with that beak, and it also eats rats and mice. Like it'll come and just you know oh, nice. clip off the heads of rats and mice. So that showed up here. Yeah, I mean it's. It all balances itself out. Like I think there was a there was a story came out. I think it was in Yellowstone. They found like they they took six wolves or like a pack of six wolves mm-hmm. or a pack of ten wolves, whatever it was, and they let them loose in Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. And what happened was was that the wolves ate I think all like deer, and then left the carcasses, which attracted other animals, which attracted like other things, which like. Like one led to another, where mm-hmm. eventually this whole ecosystem started regenerating, mm-hmm. all because it brought in wolves, mm-hmm. um, and it was really really cool. I mean, that's mm-hmm. why nowadays, like in in Maryland, places like that, where like there's no bears or wolves, like all these deer just run rampant, mm-hmm. and they had and they ha- they're mm-hmm. they're they're not scared of anything. I remember one time I was walking, and it was really cool. I was walking home from from Shul, mm-hmm. um at like seven o'clock in the morning. I think it was Shavuos. Mm-hmm. and i'm just like really kind of like in the haze like i'm tired i've been up all night and i start walking and like right when i'm near my street there's like a pack of like three or four deer just like slowly walking by <laughs> and i just like look at them they look at me and they just like <laughs> walk out and it's just, it's it's kind of funny but it's also like strange where like there used to be like wolves or like le- like mountain lions or something that used mm-hmm. to eat these deer that we don't have anymore mm-hmm. You know, and how is that? That's why there's hunting season. That's why we have all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, where we live in Baltimore, there's on, only hunting season for the two legged variety of animals. Oh, God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Leave my cousin alone. No, it's just whatever. I'm not getting into this. Um, so, sorry. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, God. Um, <clears throat> mm. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so that's back to what you saying before about pranks and things like that. Um, what about when you were in college? Did anyone do anything stupid when they were in college? Um, they had to. They had to, I know. They had to do something stupid. And you hung out with like not all nerds in college. I'm pretty sure you had your your cool moment, right? Where like you weren't. Well, the thing is, like, and with you had like in the mu- music, um, Artists, music right? art department, drama. You know what I mean? You had whenever you get people that are involved in the arts, especially the performing arts. Yeah. You're gonna get some very um I say aggressive personalities. Yes. Yeah, they, you know, no, I know I, I know, work act, acting, singing, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So um okay, there was one there were a few things. There was one time where we were I don't know we were joking some kid was on a table, was sitting on a table and we were joking around with him. It's I forgot we were doing grabbing his legs and trying to yank him off the table or something. And all of a sudden the table fell and so we had an idea 
the professor, whenever he would come in, he'd come in with a big briefcase and he would, you know, slam the briefcase down on the table and begin the lecture. So we had an idea. We propped up the table. Yeah. And we were looking forward to him coming in and taking the briefcase and putting it down and watching the table collapse. So we come in, we're all sitting there quietly, and he comes and he walks into the office and he stops, he looks, he goes, Something's wrong with this table. And he walked away from it and put his briefcase on the piano instead. <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> then um uh, there was um what's a what's another one? There were a few. There was one time where um I don't know, I've got to think of this. I remember, I remember well while you're thinking about it, I'll tell you a story. Oh yeah. One time I came into the music room okay. to practice on the piano and I and it was a it was a classroom, you know, in the music department. Yeah. And I open up the cover to the keyboard and half the keys are down. What's going on here? So I opened up the inside of the piano to see maybe sometimes you open up the inside of the piano and there's a situation like this and there's pencils in there, a book fell in there. You know, all sorts of things can fall into a piano from the sides, from the top, you know, and yeah. um, you know, and so you can't play the keys. So I look and someone put a liquor bottle. Yeah. In the piano. That's awesome. I take out the liquor bottle, and the next class was done by a was uh, done by this professor named Mr. Minger. Okay. So for a joke, I put the liquor liquor bottle on the on the chalkboard, and I draw a I write a sign going, "Mr. Minger, you left this in the piano," with an arrow pointing to the bottle, and walked out. Later on, I heard some of, some of the students talking about. Did you? And they were laughing. Did you hear what happened? We came into the room. Mr. Minger and us came into the room, and someone had put a liquor bottle on and said, "Hey, Mr. Minger, you left this in the piano." I love it. As a kid, I think we we did the pin on the chair thing a couple of times. That wasn't funny because I couldn't really hurt people. I, I would I would never stoop so low. Well, I did as to, and, as to uh, do that to somebody. No, I I did I did the pin cushion, um, the pin, the pin on the chair. That was just between me and my friends. We just thought it was funny. You just saw it in cartoons and thought it'd be like. Well, I know. I remember some kid in my elementary school class doing it to a girl, and it really hurt her. She was crying, and the the teacher was not happy. The teacher really punished this kid. Yeah, I think I remember you telling me that story after I did it in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. You never yeah. want to hurt anybody. It was just terrible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, mean, I think what other they were, I think were, I'm sure there were plenty of pranks. For sure. I, I mean, mean, college uh, campus. I wanted, I wanted to pull this prank when I was a kid. I wanted to go ahead and throw a bunch of like eggs at my principal's um, car. Mm -hmm. And then like I wussed out um, with my friend. But That's I, another prank I never liked. I never did a prank with food. Except for that time I was working at Burger King. But that, oh, really, yeah, yeah. We, that we was not that. that was not really Balta. I did not abuse any food. No. I think I think I, I did think, not abuse it. The, the kid asked for extra mayonnaise and I gave her that. Actually, and the kid asked for extra uh, ketchup on the French fries and I gave them that. Exactly. Yes, exactly. You're, what they asked very for. thoughtful, very yes. caring. Mm -hmm. Um I'm trying to think. Um what other stuff in school. Um, I know in a weird way, this this isn't a prank, this is just something that happened. I was in camp one year and we found chewing tobacco, old chewing tobacco. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. And we saw it. We're like, what are we gonna do with it? And one of my friends is like, we'll just smoke it. Like, <laughs> so we took literally regular, regular like uh -huh. school newspaper, school paper, uh -huh. and then just rolled a, a, a rolled a, a cigarette and just smoked it. What was it like? It was in eighth grade or just whatever, but I what freaked out though. But what was it like? I mean, it was a, it must have been very strong. It was a very strong tobacco. It was a very old tobacco too. What did it? What did it taste like? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, it must have tasted. Uh, let's put it this way: had it been very, very strong, you would have remembered it. Yeah. Well, no. I, well, I, honestly, one time, um, one time, I, 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 I got someone gave me this nicotine pouch. Not nicotine, a, a tobacco uh -huh. pouch called a snus. Oh, snuff. It's not snuff. Put, not not snuff. snuff. No. It's called snus. S-N-U-S. What do you do? It's a small package uh -huh. um, that you put in the lower part of your lip right there. Uh -huh. you, you just go ahead and you you um, you you put it in there and you're supposed to just get like a little bit of a, of a high. Uh -huh. And like it was just so much nicotine. I literally was just like dozing off almost. Like that's what it looks like. It looks like a small little pouch. Wow. And you, just, you put uh -huh. it underneath your lip. And it's just supposed to, it's supposed to, it's similar to chewing tobacco. And like, I was at a bar mm -hmm. and I was like kind of drunk and I was doing the, the and I had the snus nicotine yeah. and like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I had oh to like, God. I had to stop, take it out of my lip and I had to stop it. It was just so. I understand that stuff is carcinogenic. Yeah, yeah probably. Really? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. probably. But um, yeah. 
Um, did oh, I do remember one more prank that I played. Oh, okay, well, I shoplifted the shoplifting sign in the school store. That's funny. Yeah, what happens was big. This big shop. It was a very popular sign at the time where it shows this pretty girl behind these bars, and it says, "We prosecute all shoplifters." So I ran up to where they had it, like up on the wall. I took it down and I ran with it to the student cafeteria and I stood on one of the tables and held it up and said, I shoplifted the shoplifting sign. And everybody cracked up laughing and applauded me. Well, it's funny because I actually stole a Rehov Yaffa sign by the street, by the corner of Rehov Yaffa and Strauss. Oh, my It's like a very busy street. Uh -huh. um, but You're I did lucky it. you didn't get arrested for that. Well, I, I brought it home, so I have it. <laughs> I also, Do you think it passed customs? I don't know. They didn't give a shit back then. I don't think they cared that much. Um, I got everybody in my in my class in my school to sign it too. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I was into really, really stealing all these signs and whatnot, and like taking all the stuff and putting it in, in my room and making it look really cool. Um, you know, Americans. I, I remember reading like you know there were stories every now and then about um, uh, Americans um, who go to foreign countries and. I think oh, it's a yes. prank just to, just to grab a sign, whatever, and don't realize that in that country it's a very serious offense. Uh, what's his name? Um, the the black writer is it Baldwin? James Baldwin wrote a short story about a real incident that happened with him and some friends when they were in France. Okay, that one of one of his roommates did oh. that. They um they stole. They for a prank, they stole some sort of street sign, and the French police came and rounded them up and arrested them. And they were really scared. They were they until they were until they could go in front of the judge, they were in jail for a couple of days. And they were hearing all sorts of horrible stories about people being in jail and accidentally being put in death row and executed, you know, and things like that. And they were they were really scared. And finally they went in front of the judge. And when, you know, the uh, the the French, you know, the French attorney there, you know, that was giving them, um, explained to the judge that in the United States, this is considered just an innocent prank and it's not considered anything serious. And so the judge thought about it and the judge started to giggle and dismiss the case, started to laugh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I, I've had stories where like, well, just traveling stories. One time was uh, we were in Italy, me and my friends and my friend lost his passport. Oh, wow. Oh, and like, no. we were all freaking out. Like, oh my God, dude, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And he was like the most relaxed, calmest guy ever. And it was just like, whatever, I'm just going like, to take care of it tomorrow. And like, went to sleep that night mm -hmm. and woke up the next day, went to customs, been like, hey, I think I lost my passport. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys have it? And they're like, oh yeah, we do. And like, gave him the passport and it was fine. Oh, I was like, I was freaked out. I freaked what, someone out. Someone turned it into the airport? Yeah. That's fantastic. It was Italy too. That place oh. is freaking like known for pickpockets. Mm -hmm. Like I, everyone made fun of me, but, but I had like, I was, again, I was such a nerd. I had a uh, passport pouch. I would make, uh -huh. I have, a, and it would be a necklace and I had a passport pouch with my money and I would just tuck it in here. That's a good idea. Yeah. It was I a mean, great it idea. It makes very I, good sense. I, well, because I didn't, I didn't want to have any issues when it came to like, mm -hmm. you know, getting pickpocketed or losing my stuff. I had like a couple hundred bucks and, sure. um, and traveler's checks and whatnot and regular cash and euros. And I had my passport and all my other information. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I didn't want, I, I wasn't familiar. I was just trying to be cautious, sure. you know? I mean, like, like nowadays there's a lot more research. We could do re research back in the day, but like, it's just gotten so much better. I can imagine like, what would it be like when you had to do research to travel to Italy and travel to Switzerland and things like that? Mm, well, actually. You didn't do anything. <laughs> you just said F it. You just went for it. You're like, <laughs> You know what? I'm done. That was another research thing I, for. That's that. another thing I did. That's another thing I've done with like traveling. Like, well, Barcelona. Um, my trip to Barcelona this past uh, last year. Actually, yeah. almost a year. Yeah, almost yeah, year, I, yeah. I, yes, almost a year. Yeah. Um, I I got I went online and I downloaded on um, things to see and do in Barcelona and I you know read through a lot of different things and I just made a whole list. And you saw myself, the zoo. Of, of, a lot more than just the zoo. But I know, but, but you went first, to the zoo. The first, just... yeah, I wanted to go. To, I like zoos. I know. It's my I just favorite. It's no matter just... where I go, he's good to the zoo. Really? Huh. Why? Why do you like zoos? I like animals. I like seeing them in their natural habitat, and I like seeing the differences between different zoos and, uh -huh. and oh, how okay. they, you know, and how they handle the animals and how they display them. Um, like what I liked about the zoo in Barcelona, I like that mountain goat mm -hmm. habitat. That was interesting where they actually had 
a um they had a fake like small mountain it was fake yeah. and they had down at the bottom of the mountain in a pen they had the mountain goats and they wanted to show you what it was like to climb up these mountains where these goats actually have their natural habitat and you you actually walked up you climbed to the top of this mm. fake mountain and you could see like oh you could see the hills you could see the forest you can see the mountains in the distance it was a beautiful view so how many zoos have you been to in your lifetime oh gosh one is, i went to the tel aviv zoo in okay. 1973 um because ba oh, baltimore zoo practically I grew up practically living at Baltimore Zoo. I mean, okay. then those days, the Baltimore Zoo, when I was growing up, was free. And it was not, it wasn't even, it was, wasn't even gated. And you could walk in any time of the morning, noon, or night. Wow. Into Baltimore Zoo. Okay. And just walk through it. And in those days, so the problem was, though, um, was that they still had the old zoo concept was the animals in cages. Yeah. And um, it was around the 1960s where they decided this is not good for the animals at all, that what zoos should really do is recreate their natural habitat. Now, like in, in the Barcelona Zoo and a lot of zoos, what they're doing is, a lot, they're doing a lot of conservation now. Mm. Where like in Barcelona, the Barcelona Zoo, they were showing all, they had all these animals that they had actually rescued oh, wow. and were nursing back to health. And it showed that when they were due, it said there was a date on the, you know, on the enclosure when they were going to be, um, like reunited in their natural habitat in whatever you know country they were from. They had a lot of that. Um, Baltimore Zoo now has like beautiful natural habitat exhibits. Yes, yes. That are, they're just amazing. Washington Zoo. And the Washington, that's also, I like the Washington Zoo has that wonderful tropical bird exhibit where you actually come in and you come up these steps and you're like, it, it's like there's this, plexiglass that separates you from the birds but you walk up these steps so the, and oh yeah the yeah, birds yeah. the birds are all around you i've seen yeah, that. yeah, that, yeah, nice, yeah. That, that's also really nice it's not plexiglass i think i, well, I went it was, there yeah it, it was kind of like a mesh yeah that's yeah. right yeah it's more yeah, like, it has to be right. terrible because it, uh, you have to have proper ventilation mm -hmm. because of the way everything goes with, with, I, I went to the zoo together. in montreal montreal zoo okay you know and that was back in the 1970s brooklyn zoo Yes, Brooklyn, Bronx. The Bronx Zoo. Oh, Bronx we went to the Bronx Zoo. I went to the Bronx Zoo, I think it was like, it had to be like 1971. Interesting. 1970, 1971, yeah, I went to the Bronx Zoo. That was amazing. That is huge, I, very amazing. I, what about the Florida zoos? Oh, and I also went to, oh, and I also went to um, that little zoo that they have in Central Park. Okay. They have a zoo. Oh, I was reading a funny article that many years ago about, there There's, it was an article up, uh, about anthropomorphism. You know okay. what that is? Yes. It's when you know, humans attribute, like, uh, identify human qualities to animals. Yes. So this um, woman who was a zookeeper there at the Central Park Zoo said there were these boys that came over to the gorilla cage, and they're jumping in front of the gorilla, going, come on, come on, man, you want to fight? You want to fight? Come on, man, you want to fight? You want to fight? So she comes over to these boys, and she goes, boys, that's a female gorilla. And they all go, ah. <laughs> that's cute. So, so, wow. So I, I, I it's not weird to say, but I n never knew that about you, that you really just enjoy zoos. Um, so I guess, where have you been in America that you've been, that you've seen zoos? Um, let's say Baltimore Zoo, Washington. New, uh, Baltimore, Washington, New York, I've Florida. Never, I'm to, um, I, oh, I went to, um, there's uh, um, Lion Safari. Where? Lion Safari in Florida. Ah, okay. Tom, you were there with us, weren't you? No. Did you come with us? No, I was not. Oh, it was, it was Menachem and Yosef. Oh, my gosh. They probably mess around with stuff. It says there are... So, you drive through it. Yes. So you can see the animals and natural habitats. There are signs all Do over the place. Do not leave. Don't leave. Right. Menachem Stay left. in your car. Do not leave your car. Oh, do not leave your car. Well, you know... Who left the car? You, Yosef and Menachem. Your brothers, yeah. when they see a sign that says, do, do not, not. Like, okay, they interpret it. We have to do it. Too. So they got out of the car, and fortunately, the lion was behind the fence. They walked over to the fence where the lion was to pet the lion. Oh, my God. I said, get in the car! Jeez Louise. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> then um, I took, um, I took um, uh, your little niece, your niece and nephew, yeah. um, many, many, a uh, number of years ago, when we first moved to Florida, um, I took them there, and the 
ostrich came over to the window of my car where um, your nephew was sitting. He was like three years old. Yeah. And the ostrich started like to hit the heck at the window with his beak. And he started, your nephew started crying. He got oh. scared because this ostrich is pecking right at his window like that. How old was he? He was three years old at the time. Like oh, three, okay, four fine. years old, All maybe right. three. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. But also the aquarium. The aquarium is interesting. Right. Except every time when I go to the aquarium and I see these big, beautiful fish swimming around, I look and I start to salivate and I think, hmm. It would taste fantastic, right? Lemon juice, olive oil, bay, you know. Like I got to show you some videos. Dill I gotta weed, some videos. garlic in the oven. You know, three, three fifty for maybe fifteen, twenty minutes. Yeah, and... it's good to go. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's our episode. Thank you so much, guys.